This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb-roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Welcome to the HCI family of podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Welcome to the podcast. In today's podcast episode, I talk with Alexandria Gennetti about creating a culture of transparency. Alexandria Gennetti, welcome to the conversation today. Thank you, John. I'm excited to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about how we can go about creating a culture of transparency within our organizations. I'm a big believer in trust as a foundation for most good things that happen in leadership, most good things that happen in the people management, in the in the HR space. And I think that culture of transparency is a foundational component to that trust that we try to engender and foster within our teams. So we're going to unpack all of this and explore this in our conversation uh, today. As we get started, I wanted to share Alex's bio with everybody. Alex is a global human resource leader with extensive experience in managing every facet of the employee life cycle, including designing and implementing employee onboarding programs, benefits, and total compensation management, policy development, payroll management, HRIS configuration, and employee relations. She is currently the head of people at Enable, a Series C technology company with almost 550 employees across five countries and counting. Uh, That's wonderful. Anything else, Alex, that you would like to highlight by way of your own personal background or context or about your company Enable uh, as we get started? Oh, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for that introduction. Much, much appreciated. Um, I've grown up in tech. I've I've been in Silicon Valley, venture backed tech companies my entire career and Enable to me is really special. It's um, a software for manufacturers, distributors, and retailers to manage their B2B rebates collaboratively. We're really trying to redefine the word rebate and bring it into the broader, mm. broader world as a more dinner time table talk conversation. Uh, my fiance is in finance, and so our, our dinner time conversations revolve around HR and finance and tech companies. I appreciate that might not be everybody's, but I learned a heck of a lot about rebates when I came to Enable. So trying to help the rest of the world also learn a heck of a lot about rebates. Well, very good. I have to admit my initial gut reaction when I hear the word rebate is not a positive one. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. I have, I have those experiences as many probably do where you get, you know, you buy this thing, you get this rebate, you have to mail in a form and then it takes forever. And then eventually you might get it back or they might, you know, something happened that you didn't fill it out right or whatever. That's kind of my thinking, you know, around rebates. And I know that's an overly simplified not entirely accurate perspective. So sure. so let's start by just c- correcting that a little bit for me and for the audience. Well, I'm so happy that you use the word trust because our mission is to enable trusted trading relationships to serve customers better together. And there was a recent Gartner paper that actually came out and the opinion of that paper was don't use um don't use discounts, use rebates. Mm. 
Hmm. Because the whole point of a rebate is to drive a behavior, right? Hmm. We focus on B2B rebates. Um, but I think of B2C rebates. When I buy my contacts from 1-800 contacts, I'm dropping six, $700 because I buy the daily ones because I'm a bit of a diva, self-admitted. <laughs> um, but I will send that rebate in for 30 bucks. And so that rebate is driving the behavior of me going to 1-800 contacts because I know I'll get a better price there through that rebate. Um, and so you can apply the same thinking to a B2B deal. The Home Depot is one of our customers and they use enable to track all of their rebates with their suppliers and think about when you walk through home depot we're not in the retail section but one day enable will be big and giant and you'll walk through the retail section of of any store and you'll see you'll hopefully think wow i wonder how all of these pieces got here there's an entire supply chain of transactions that has to happen before anything Mm -hmm. can get off the shelf to get to you the end user and we are hoping to be the backbone of those steps from source to sell yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, all right. So you are a global HR person in the tech industry, Silicon Valley. You're in a Series C technology company, growing, scaling. Uh, tell us just a little bit more about that process, because I think that'll inform how we talk about this culture, culture of transparency within organizations. Absolutely. And I think it's important to caveat, too, that different industries might have different definitions sure. of transparency and Um, different life cycles. You know, when I joined Enable two years ago, we had about 150 people um, and now we're pushing Mm. 550. So as you can all imagine, everything's broken twice. We've fixed it three times. We're on our third (laughs) build or something, right? Um, But when you're at such a small company, when you start at such a small scale, things are a lot more visible. Um, If there's, hypothetically, if there's a payroll issue, if there is a new program that you're launching, it is in front of people much louder than at a company like maybe Salesforce, for example, just to stay in the tech world Um, because things are so siloed there. When you're at an emerging scaling company, everything is visible. Everything's right in front of you. When someone departs, that's a huge thing because everyone sees it. So how you manage those really important moments is key. Key. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I've been in a few companies in past lives where, you know, things haven't necessarily been as transparent as they probably could have been and been bitten for it. So um, the executive team at Enable is most of us are tech vets, right? We've done it before. Some of us have even done it together before. And so we mm-hmm. are really looking at this as like our golden child and building the company that we want to build. Um, and our the, the word trust is in our mission. And so our CEO, mm-hmm. Andrew Butt is very, very dedicated to that word. It appears elsewhere with Enable, not just in our mission, but that word trust is huge. And he really wanted to make sure that by bringing a people person on to report directly to him, I also cared about that word. Um, So part of my team's mission is also building trust within the business to make sure that whatever we do, whatever comes out of the people at Enable Inbox is trusted. The team believes it. They know that they don't have to second guess or worry that if we say, hey, you're going to be paid on the 15th, they'll be paid on the 15th. When we think about that transparency, that's kind of like if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the bottom piece is trusting your business. You have to trust that your benefits are there. You have to trust that you're going to get paid. You have to trust that when something's happening, whether it be good or bad, they will tell you that something good or bad is happening so that you can make informed decisions about your future. Um, so when I think about a transparent culture, that is table stakes. Your computer has to work. Your mm-hmm. computer has to be on time. I've said, I've said that before, but I think that's often a forgotten about piece of a transparent culture, because if you don't have those basics, you're never going to be able to build on that and really have an honest conversation with your people about a positive thing or a negative thing. And I think yeah. in light of what we've called the SaaS crash, um, all these companies inflating and then having to deflate, um, that's the best way to break trust by saying, hey, by the way, we did a little bit too much. Um, If you're not honest about that conversation, on top of that bottom piece of the tier of making sure that your basic needs are met, you're going to immediately break trust with the business. And I I would imagine lose a lot of your people. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. And in in Salt Lake, we have what's called Silicon Slopes. So it's kind of a, a, a growing tech hub here in Utah as well. Um, and it's, it, so we have a nice tech scene here and just like in Silicon Valley and other places, you know, with this tech bubble, um, that, and all the layoffs that have been happening, it's hit us here too. Uh, the same thing has happened and absolutely companies that previously had, you know, won awards for employee experience and, and best places to work and all those sorts of things. Now they're laying off half their people. Right. Um, that, that is devastating <laughs> when it comes to the culture, when it comes to that trust piece. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure that every leader and every organization wants 
there to be trust because without trust, you don't have anything like you don't have social interactions. You don't have um, business and sales and you, you just can't do that without trust. Right. Uh, and so I think I'm sure everyone has good intentions and and wants to do things the right way. Yet we, this is a common problem, a common theme. Like I see it come up again and again and again. I talk with companies all the time about a culture of transparency and trust. And yet in the daily kind of lived experience of employees and customers in the workings of the organization, you know, those good intentions don't always play out, right? Mm -mm, They don't, they don't. And of course there's, there's caveats. If you're a public company, there's only so much you can share Um, when you're private, you have a lot more freedom. And I've, I've only, I lived in the public world. I lived in the, in the private world. I definitely prefer the private world. Um, But you, I think you have to be willing to pull back the curtain um, as much as possible and trust that you're, that you've hired adults and that you have to deliver a hard message. Like, Hey, we're doing a riff. Here's why you kind of have to, to, you know, take your, you gotta take the medicine. You have to figure Mm -hmm. out how to get off the drug and you have to say, here we are. This is the decision that we made. And I think being vulnerable and pulling back that curtain and showing your team how hard of how hard of a decision you had to make um and why i think will go much farther than sugarcoating it hiding it um someone i'm very close to in life who will not be named is at a company that did uh, a huge layoff and there was no communication to the team they had an all hands the day after they announced the layoff and nothing was said and i talked to that person that day and the first thing they said to me was i do not trust these people mm. And I thought, yeah, there's there's that T word again. It's it's trust. You got to have the basics down. You have to trust that your basic needs are met every day. But right on top of that, the second part of the pyramid, if you will, has to be proper communication. And it doesn't need to be good communication. It doesn't need to be nice and fluffy. It just needs to be honest. It needs to be mm-hmm. true. It needs to be honest. And it needs to be a little bit vulnerable. Um, that's something I talk to my CEO about all the time. Um, we have monthly all hands meetings here at Enable and there's a huge like knee jerk reaction to have them be positive. Amazing. Woo. CEO is the beacon of light at a business, right? You are only here to say wonderful things. (laughs) Um, but if that's all they hear from you and then inevitably we miss a number a quarter, we have to take an adverse action against the business. Um, that's going to be a whiplash gut punch to them. And they're going to start to question you a little bit. You need to be honest to make sure that you're also showing vulnerability with Enable. And he has taken that on account and just run with it. And whenever he speaks now, the business really listens because they know that whatever he's saying is true, is honest, it's vulnerable, and they're going to get the, the facts from him every month. Yeah. So, and people, totally. people can tell the difference, right? They know if you're being genuine and straightforward, oh, yeah. they know if you're putting spin on it, if you're mm-hmm. trying to manipulate them or sell them on something, um, you know, it, yeah, just be genuine, have integrity. Um, yeah. People can count on what you say. That's not to say that you're going to be perfect, that that uh, things aren't going to change, that sometimes you're going to have to make those hard decisions that are going to negatively impact some people or parts of the business. You know, mm-hmm. like all of, I think we're we're humans, we're adults, we get it. Like we understand um, we got to treat our people like humans. And I think we infantilize our people a lot of times. We think we have to tiptoe around them and, and not share anything except the positive stuff. And people aren't stupid. Like they know, like, you know, all, for example, let's say your company didn't even have any layoffs during all these these tech layoffs. Well, guess what? If you just put your head in the sand and pretend like everything's fine, nothing's no, no problem here. People know that there's a problem. Like it's an industry wide problem. (laughs) And so you better, you better address it and you better talk about it openly. Otherwise Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. will fill in the gaps of information. And usually they're going to fill it in with stuff that's not as good (laughs) as how you can guide the conversation in a, in a healthy way. That is the perfect way to phrase it. We thankfully were in a position where we didn't have to do any layoffs, but we wanted to make sure that we addressed all the companies and partners of our people, friends of people who might've been in that situation. Um, The macroeconomic climate right now for tech is not wonderful. It's getting better, but it's not great. And so you know, we have been very honest with our business around when we're going to fundraise again, what our runway is. We really try to pull that curtain back, like I said, and give as many people at Enable as we can a lot of confidence in us as an executive team. Like, hey, we are, because mm-hmm. not only did we choose them, right, during the, the interview process process, but they choose Enable and they have to trust that the people that are leading Enable aren't going to lead them into the ground. 
And so every month, Andrew does a, a strategic briefing during the beginning of our all hands meetings and kind of gives them like a state of the state. Like, here we are. Here's where we're going. Here's what we got to do so that we can get there. And those are oftentimes positive, but we will make sure that he's very honest with the business on what the macroeconomic world looks like. I mean, you know, two years ago, everyone was blowing their sales numbers out of the water and that's not right. the case anymore. And so we're showing them our trends. We're showing them what's happening in the world. What are, what no's do we hear from prospects? What yeses are we getting? How can we turn more no's into yeses? And it's very honest. Um, but you're absolutely right that if you don't fill in the gaps for someone, they will automatically jump that, that ladder of inference and say, wait a minute, this is, there's a small gap here. Oh, oh, the world's ending. It's the worst thing for me. I think salary transparency is a perfect example of that. If someone isn't confident where they sit because of their performance or because of the macroeconomic climate, because of company budget, whatever, because we're, we're going to put in there, they're going to immediately jump up that ladder and infer that they are being screwed, right? That, yeah. that especially with something like salary. It's such an emotional thing. If you're not being as transparent as you legally can be, we operate in five countries. There's so many different laws we have to follow. But if we're not making sure that we're giving our people as much confidence as we can within their salary, um, they're going to jump up that ladder and automatically think that they're going to have a better life somewhere else. So it's it's a tricky line to walk, but it's under that yeah. broader culture of trust. Do your people trust that you're doing right by them? I think probably what I'm getting to, to back you up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think in this whole transparency conversation, part of this is driven by the recognition, as you mentioned just a minute ago, that you chose them, but they also chose you. Like, and I, I get it. If there's a, if we're in a period of tech layoffs, you know, maybe people are feeling a little bit more uncertain about their jobs and they're, you know, they, they got to stick it out with where they're at. But, but generally speaking, it's still you know, a buyer's market, like, like people have choices, uh, you know, in the employment market and, and people are choosing to work with you. And you, so you can't just assume, oh, they're lucky to have a job. So I can just kind of treat them however I want. No, like they are choosing you and they can, they can just as easily choose to not be with you and they can go somewhere else. And so it has to be a mutual and reciprocal kind of um, uh, accountability and trust that's developed within your team, whether you're tiny and like small startup all the way up through scaling and even to large corporations. And you also mentioned earlier, you know, this does get more challenging as you grow, as you get bigger, because I mean, when you're small, you literally are like seeing everybody every day, right? Yeah. And you just communicate and it just happens. And sometimes it's just very organic. And as you get bigger, you have to systematize it and you have to make sure that you're being very strategic in how you reach out. And once you get to the point where you're like a really large company with thousands of employees, mm-hmm. it, it becomes a real challenge. Even when you have the best of intentions and you're trying to put the time and the energy and the money behind making sure that you're being as transparent as possible, it's not mm-hmm. like easy <laughs> to do oh, that. God, no. no, it's not. <laughs> It's such a wide scale. I've I've been employee number 29 and I've offboarded someone. And I, hey, Joe, so-and-so's gone. Payroll, you good? Yep, yeah, cool. That, that's how we <laughs> communicate, right? But then I was number 26557 at Workday and that's not going to work, right? The payroll team is in a different country than I am. And in order yeah. for me to get my information over to them, it has to pass through a series of transactions that are SOC compliant, HIPAA compliant, that are confidential to protect the integrity of the employee's experience. Oh, there's so many things that go into it as you scale. And every single milestone of scale, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 20,000 is a different experience, a different process. And so when you're at a scaling company like Enable, having to find different ways to build the same process over and over again. For, mm. I love it. That's why I do it. But it's so important. And you have to also, to make it even more complex and frustrating sometimes, explain to your people why you're doing it when you're doing it. Yep. Because change management is a huge part of any of that. I feel like change management when it comes to communication is probably the most important part of the communication piece. You can change a process. You can change a benefit. You can change a sales motion. But if you're not communicating the why, the how, and giving the team enough time to digest it, um, you, you're going to botch that entire thing. Just as important as the actual process is, the communication of that process change or think change, whatever you're changing mm-hmm. is Super important. Back to that trust word. I feel like we're really, we're, we're really evolving around this word, John. I love it. Um, you ha- your people have to trust you, and in order for them to trust you, they have to trust that what you're communicating to them is what they need. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and you mentioned earlier, you know, that because you've been scaling so rapidly, what 150 employees two years ago, 550 employees today. I mean, that's 
yeah, that's <laughs> huge growth. Uh, and that's, that's just a challenge for everybody. And so you have these systems, you have these processes, they, they either break or become obsolete. And so then you have to like rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. Right. And it's like this constant process and people get change fatigue. Like, and so even when people trust you, even when people feel like, yes, you're being straightforward with them, they get change fatigue and then they get resistant to the change for a variety of reasons that then just make it all the much more challenging to do that next iteration. And it's not, you know, it's not just the flavor of the month. It's not just doing the fad. It's like, there's real reasons why you need to make these changes because you're scaling <laughs> and what you use, what you used to do won't serve you anymore, or it's not even compliant anymore or, or whatever. We have a bigger budget now. So there's right. a better way we can build this today. Yeah, that's that's so true. And that's something that my team's really conscious of. I think um, the the old method of, of HR, by the way, I should clarify, at Enable, we are people and places. That is the mm-hmm. team that I'm responsible for. It's your hired, really hired fire experience, um, hired yeah. offboard, I should say, experience, but then also your experience when you're in office or when you're at home. Right. Um, and there's so much that goes into that. And I think the old way of thinking about HR and facilities, if you will, instead of people and places is everything happens in the background. You don't hear the HR team. If you have to walk into HR's office, like, oh, shoot, you're in trouble. Um, the facilities people are going to come and clean at night. They're going to make sure that your desk goes up and down. That's like the opposite of the picture that we wanted to paint of ourselves at Enable. We wanted to be in front of the business one of the reasons where people in places, but also so that to your point, John, when I have to change things five times in six months, uh, we have built those relationships with everybody in the business so that we can show them what it means for them. Mm-hmm. So instead of having to be a reactive function, we still are. I mean, you know, we, sure. we go from 520 to 530 sometimes in one day um, or the other way. Mm-hmm. But we've built those relationships, those friendships, those connections with every piece of our business so that when those changes have to happen, we can effectively communicate the value proposition of that change, right? What is this change going to do for you, engineer? What is this change going to do for you, salesperson? Why are we getting a new expenses system? And why are we on our third one in a quarter, right? We have to (laughs) tell them why. Because the first one went bankrupt. Because the second one, we picked the wrong one. And the third one, you're going to love it. This is going to be so easy for you. Look at all the perks you now have. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to manage that yeah. that change fatigue. Can I add with with that specific example? Um, <laughs> there's vulnerability there, right? And being oh, able to say, say, you know what, we blew it. We chose the wrong one. <laughs> and yep. and so yeah, this is going to mean a little bit more work for you. Now we have to transition. You mm-hmm. know, just but being people aren't dumb. Like they 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 oh. understand that there are innate challenges, especially when you're scaling, right? And and just being a little bit vulnerable and just being open about that. Like, yeah, we didn't quite get it right last time. We're going to do better this time. This new system, this is even better. It's going to really help us. This is why it's important for you. All of that, it just helps to reinforce the trust that you build. You know, as we think about trust building mechanisms and maintenance mechanisms, it's built on those interactions. And and when we just kind of gloss over things, and one of the things that I, I really, really hate I get where it's coming from, but I really, really hate it is kind of this gaslighting that often happens in the name of putting your best face forward. Like, I don't want to lose face. I want to be positive. I don't want, I don't want people to lack the certainty that I feel they need around what we're doing here. And so I'm going to gloss over things and I'm going to gaslight my people just to, so so that they, you know, think that maybe they're not paying attention and maybe they'll just yeah. Not remember that, hey, we just switched things three times in the last quarter. But mm-hmm. again, people aren't stupid. Some people won't notice. Some people do forget. Mm-hmm. But most people know exactly what you're doing. And it, that will undermine you and erode your trust so quickly. And it, it's just a simple little thing that you can do that will make all the difference in the world. Just that little bit of vulnerability. Absolutely. And I think about, you know, people in places are only one service center. Yeah. We have IT, we have finance, we have compliance, we have a lot of pieces of our business that serve as a service, right? Like I'm yeah. here to make sure that the business is protected, but successful. Like I enable our employees, if you will, in the most positive sense of that word as I can use. Yeah. Um, when I think about the services my team has received from other parts of enable, 
right? I think about our IT team. We are one of the same. We both are here to protect the business and make sure that our people can exceed any expectation that they might have of themselves, right? We're here to be an accelerant. Um, I think about, you know, how easy is it to log into my email? Do I get my computer on time? And if any of those experiences aren't positive, what is happening to me as the end user to make sure that my ex- my experience, even though the actual transaction might not have been positive, how do I make sure, or how am I receiving that experience? Yeah. Is it um, the IT person reaching out and saying, I can't believe you forgot your password. Oh my God. I do that all the time. <laughs> By the way, I'm the of that. I am every IT person's nightmare. I am sorry, Ewan, it's, it's my problem. <laughs> but how I, every time I go to the IT team, I feel so supported and cared about because yeah. I'm never met with any sort of gaslight. That's the perfect word. Um, I never get in trouble. It very well could be because I'm I'm an executive and they might be giving me some lip service, but my team is very honest with me. And there's a couple of me's on my team too. And they never are afraid to go approach that team. And I think that's what that turns into is when you start to break down that trust and inevitably put up that barrier between you and your customer, because everybody at Enable is my customer, right? Those are my customers. Yeah. They're not going to come to us. They're not going to trust us with things. They're not going to ask us the questions that we need to be aware that they have questions on. And it really starts to work against you if you are the one that criticizes, is condescending, if you're guest. And let me tell you, it's hard to be in IT. It's hard to be in people. Some of the questions and things that we get are really ridiculous. And sometimes people are super mean to us. Uh, But we have to flip it back and make sure that we are giving them that service of care, accept acceptance, trust, so that next time they have a problem that's big, that really could jeopardize something within the business, they're not afraid to come and say, hey, IT, I lost my computer. They're not afraid of that, right? So it's it does really come back to that, that big T word to make sure that if and when shoot does hit the fan, they are they feel yeah. safe coming to you for those things because it happens every day. We had someone leave their backpack on the top of their car the other day. <laughs> you know, it it happens to the best of us, right? It totally happened. And that poor guy was so, he knew exactly what to do. He ran right yeah. to his local IT person. He said, oh my God, I did this. And if he had been afraid that he was going to get in trouble, I mean, we didn't make him go through a security training, but like that connection that he had with his local service center was so strong already that he wasn't worried about yeah. the impact it was going to have on him. He was more worried about the impact it was going to have on the business, which is the the behavior that we wanted to drive. So it was really wonderful to see that example. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Alex, this has just been a really fun conversation. We could go on and on and we've only scratched the surface around I transparency know. and culture, but uh, we're going to have to end it there for today. Before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team there at Enable, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, a culture of transparency to me feels like common sense, but I feel like for a lot of businesses that maybe are in a more progressive sector, it isn't. So um, for anyone listening to this, I would encourage you to just talk to your managers about what it means to them to have a transparent culture and see how far you can make that ripple go. It's my two cents. And then you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm Alexandria Gennetti. Um, I'm soon to be Alexandria Kramer with a C and getting married in a couple of months. So if you see that change, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I do not love wedding planning. I would much rather be (laughs) (laughs) full, full, full in in the experience of, in the spirit, excuse me, of trust and transparency. It's I'm, I'm an HR lady. I'm not a wedding planner. (laughs) (laughs) If I, if I ever had to do it again, I would elope, you know, it's, it's, it's too much asshole. (laughs) If Vegas wasn't down right now, I wouldn't be doing it. Well, very good. Alex, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Alex and her team there at Enable can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah.
Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products.